Hi everyone and welcome to a new episode of Paratalk and on this episode of Paratalk I have a returning guest. I have someone that did a live stream with Gareth and myself oh, it was over a year ago now. Now some of you may have already guessed obviously from the uh, thumbnail art but I have back Tom the one and only shrouded hand from YouTube. Are you there Tom? Hello. Hello how are you? I'm good, thanks. Yourself? I'm, I'm all right. It's been a while, and it's great that you're back on the, well, back on the version two of Paratalk. Slightly bittersweet without Gareth, I suppose, but uh, it's it's good to see that you're keeping the, uh, keeping the podcast going. I had a lot of thought, and I had to think about how I was going to do it uh, without Gareth, because uh, mm-hmm. Gareth was obviously an, a very important part of Paratalk. So yeah. I, I was kind of... Um, a decision that I would come back, but I had to sort of do something slightly different because there's no way that I could sort of rekindle anything that Gareth and I did. So I think this is a an evolved version of Paratalk, and I thought, well, mm-hmm. why don't we get Tom back? Why don't we get him on an episode, and why don't we talk about some some UFOs and some just just some creepy stuff? Yeah, sounds good to me. Good, good. So. I've got a couple of questions and because I've been watching your videos and I've, obviously I, I just want to, I, I don't want to turn this into a, the, the shrouded hand YouTube channel vid, uh, episode, but I do want to say that your videos have, have sort of, you've, you've stepped up a mark. You've, you've started to produce some really, really good quality content lately. What, what's changed there? Well, when I started the channel, I just was just putting out silly videos and I didn't really care that much about who was watching because I only had a few vi- few viewers. But I suppose as the channel's grown, I've just started to put more effort into them. I've become, <laughs> I've become more, more aware of people actually watching the content. So, I've you know, I've tried to actually research things and properly and just put more effort into the the production of the videos. I suppose also you just learn yeah. as yeah, you yeah. go along better editing skills and things like that so i i suppose it's just a reaction to the channel growing a bit bigger right? you just become a bit more aware of what you're putting out i mean when i first started it was just as i say just silly slideshows and sort of jokey videos and things like that i wasn't really doing it to to build an audience but now i guess i've just become more aware of who's watching my videos and things like that mm. well i have to say that uh I'm 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 really enjoying some of those episodes, and I think that you uh, you're doing really good work when it comes to com- conveying that that spookiness, that uneasiness about the story that you're telling. Uh, because there are a few times where I got my headphones on and and the lights are out, and I'm I'm watching a video, and I'm thinking, well, man, this is like you know, this is this is giving me the chills. <laughs> but um, what I was going to say was uh, one of the reasons for you to be on the episode was. I was thinking I always wanted to pick your brains about the UFO phenomenon and I and I mm-hmm. know that recently you told me that you've sort of been dipping your toes in a little bit into abductions and 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 getting yeah. you've been getting interested a little bit how did that come about Um well I've always been sort of interested in it just in general I've I've always had an interest in just anything paranormal really and it, you know not not specifically UFOs ghosts demons folklore that sort of thing um Recently, mostly it's because of my next door neighbor. He's just been like chewing my ear off talking about aliens mm-hmm. and things. He found out that I was, um, I think we got talking about something and I told him I had this YouTube channel and he, he went to have a look and then it, it sort of turned out that he's really into UFOs and aliens. So we've just been having a lot of conversations over the, the back fence about aliens and that's got me more interested in looking into them more i think that's i think that's what sort of brought back my interest in it really and um i because I, I, I collect books mm. I, I ended up just looking at my bookshelf and i've got loads of books about aliens and things that i've yeah. never read because I, I, I collect books i keep buying books and putting them on my shelf and then reading about 10 percent of them so i was yeah. looking through my bookshelf and i say oh i've got this book it seems interesting why haven't i picked this one up you know it sort of rekindled my interest so i've been sort of working through my old book collection looking at some interesting things about ufos and abductions and things like that so yeah it's it's an interest that i've always had but recently it's it's sort of got slightly more rekindled so do you think that's got anything to do with um like we had our our, the lockdowns and stuff do you think that Mm -hmm. when you you're in a situation where you've got an awful lot of time on your hands i i found this because i'm like you i do have quite a lot of books and i've got to the point where i've bought a kindle 
and started yeah. rebuying those books and putting them all on my Kindle so that I can just carry it around with me. And I've mm-hmm. literally got my whole library my you know, in digital format, but it's it's with me. So if I'm anywhere and I just want to have a quick read, I can either do it on my phone or I can do it on my Kindle. So it's just it's just convenient. But I, I understand what you're saying is I, I love going around old secondhand bookshops and yeah. going to the the, the 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 you know the paranormal section and having mm-hmm. a browse for all of the the, you know, the classic books and picking up some great deals. And I've got some great deals from from various old bookshops. But yeah. you do, you get these books and you put, you get home and you think, I'm going to read a couple of chapters and you read a couple of chapters and you think, yeah, I'll come back to that one. And then you'll start mm-hmm. another one and you read a chapter and you go, I'll come back to that one. And before you know it, you've got 10 books that you've started yeah. and, you, and you've got a few chapters in and you're thinking, yeah, I need, really need to read these. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's exactly what it's like. Yeah. But so w- what I was going to say was now that you um, obviously, you know, Shredded Hand, the YouTube channel. It's mm-hmm. a, a whole weird load of stuff on there that I, you know, you go for the really head scratching stuff. And for you in the real life, have you ever had any UFO or strange sightings that you've, that not necessarily you're going to say, well, that was a UFO or, or that, yeah. you know, that just something that was strange. As far as anything that could be considered a UFO, I've only ever seen, I'd say, very brief flashes of things mm-hmm. they were so quick that i couldn't tell you for sure what they were the main one it was about three years ago and uh me and my wife we were going to italy for a holiday and because i'm terrified of flying we were getting the coach there so we had to get up at like two in the morning to catch this coach drive for like three days over to italy we packed up all our stuff and i'm stood out on the driveway outside the house we're ready to catch a taxi down to the, where the coach is picking us up. And I just look up the street. I just see a green flash go across the sky. It's quite like low down. It looks mm. quite large, but it's it's so quick that I can't see. I, I just don't see what it is. You know, it's it looks like a light. Yeah. That's all I can say about it. And it looks quite big. It doesn't look like, you know, when you see a plane or a helicopter and it's like a little tiny point of light in the sky. It looked quite large. It looked quite like it was quite low down. It just flashed across the top of the houses at the top of the road. And I thought, well, that thing, if that thing comes back, I'm going to try and record it and now be able to slow down the video and see what it is. But so I started filming up the street, but it didn't come back. But that's, um, I'd say that was the most <laughs> alien thing I've seen. Um, and it, this was but like at the top of the street where I'm looking up, there's a park called Watergate Park. Mm-hmm. And after that, when I got home from my holiday, I was still thinking about this light that I'd seen. And I looked up any other reports from that area. And I found one from, I think it was like probably about three years before I'd seen that light. And someone else said they were walking from, they, they, they mentioned the town where I live. They said they were walking from there up past Watergate Park. And they saw a green light emerge up out of the park and fly over their heads. Mm. So... It's it seem it sounds like from their description it was in almost exactly the same place that I saw this light, but what I saw it was so quick it was it was like literally a split second it just looked unusual and I thought what what is that and it was enough for me to get my camera out and point it up the street just in case it came back but yeah I didn't get a good look at it. That's the that's, that's the downside when you have um, like a sighting of something like that and you catch a glimpse of something and it's. Our brains can't figure mm. out quick enough what it might have been. It it could have been a bird, or it, it could have been, yeah. you know, just a bit of dust in your eye, or it could have been something else. Mm-hmm. But that's un- unfortunate. But yeah. uh, it's interesting because that leads me on to we're talking about books and and UFO sightings. Mm. I wanted to go over with you a case of a book that I started reading recently, mm-hmm. and it happened in Scotland in I think it was nineteen ninety two, and. This was two two guys, okay, and they had absolutely no interest in UFOs. They were just everyday guys. They'd go to work, come home, watch the TV, go to the pub at the weekends. You know, they that's all they yeah. you know, that was their thing. They had no interest, and they had to go to a uh, drop some stuff off. And this is in from Edinburgh. They were located in Edinburgh, and they mm-hmm. had to drive about thirty minutes to drop some items off to a friend's house. And the the place that they were going to was we say a, a very quiet area of you know windy roads and stuff mm-hmm. uh they got about halfway and they came around a corner and they see this object over the road it was near a well there is a connection there but it was near a, a reservoir 
and they see this huge object over the road and they course they the driver that panics and they think we're gonna you know i don't want to get stuck with near this we're gonna drive past it they drive under it they see some like shimmering as they drive under it and they feel a bump in the car like a like something thumped the back of the car or cut you know something had happened like that mm-hmm. and th- and then everything goes black and then it's a few seconds and then everything's light again and they're they're on the other side of the road driving at speed and the driver's like completely freaking out they pull over they they look in the mirror they don't see anything they just drive for hell for lever to where they're going when they get to their destination and knock on the, their friend's door to drop off the equipment um the friend they get the they see their bedroom light come on and they come down and they're like you know what the hell what, where have you been we're in bed and of course to them to these two chaps it only like half an hour has passed but mm-hmm. when they look at their watches nearly two and a half hours has gone by so they you know they have this missing time this that's the first kind of unusual thing they both go yeah. home and some days go by and of course you got to remember that these chaps they don't they don't have an interest in UFOs, the paranormal. Yeah. So what they experience is, to them, still a conundrum. They're not sure, you know, an alien craft, how crazy sort of thing. One of them starts to have these really weird nightmares and dreams. And he decides to contact some sort of UFO group to see if he could ask some questions about were there any strange things in that area? Was anything reported? Mm. They don't really get much luck until they... They send a message to a chap, Malcolm Robinson, who was a local investigator. And he says, why don't, why don't we meet up and have a chat? They meet up and he tells them that what happened to them. And he said, have you ever been, have you ever heard of hypnotic regression? So neither of them have, but they start, they, they get to a point now where they want answers because it's affecting their, their day-to-day lives. It's playing on their minds that something happened, but they feel that something more happened. So yeah. they go to meet this, lady who does regression for alleged people who have had abductions but they don't know mm-hmm. that that's the case at the moment uh so they they have a regression session each and they recall, do some recall and it it turns out that to i you know to cut a long story short i don't want to because it's a the book is there's so much stuff in it but to cut a long story short they recall that when they passed under this craft and everything blacked out that it wasn't a case of them just going under the craft. That in the point where they blacked out, they actually did wake up in inside the craft with the car, and that they were led out of the vehicle by these small beings who didn't say anything. They didn't speak. They just, you know, motioned or sent messages to their mind, like yeah, a telepathy. Like a temp- yeah, yeah, and that they had procedures done on them. That there were other people in the craft that they could see. They. And the strange thing was they didn't feel uh, terrified. They just felt relaxed. They mm. did also didn't feel that they were completely in control of their bodies, that they were being led in some way. They had procedures done on them, which were quite painful. They saw other people inside the craft. You know, this, this whole thing kind of went on and then they were put back in their cars. And one of the things, interesting things is when they uh, arrived at the place after they had this encounter, and they didn't think that they'd been abducted or anything like that. They noticed, uh, the passenger noticed that his seatbelt was undone and that he remembers yeah. clearly that when he got in the car, he locked his seatbelt off. You know, they, they make mistakes. And you hear that as well with other people that have had possible abductions is when they, uh, you know, when they get back in the vehicle or they're put back where they originally were, that they might have their, their socks are in, inside out or their yeah, shirt is yeah. in around the wrong way or they're, they're <laughs> missing a part of their clothing. Um, yeah. So, what what's your thought on 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 that kind of when you have that and 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 when you get mentally regressed? What have you got any thoughts on hypnotic regression? The only thing I can say about hypnotic regression, there is some criticisms of it in that sometimes if you have a the hypnotist can sort of lead the mm. person into sort of um, if they've got a particular idea about what they. They think an alien encounter will be like they can sometimes lead. So sometimes that, that's a, a slight criticism of hypnotic yeah. regression. I've also heard suggested that there could also sometimes be a telepathic link between the hypnotist and the because you're in a very suggestive state. Yeah. And your mind's really open. And sometimes if if the hypnotist has an idea of what the alien encounter might be, the thought can somehow be implanted 
into yeah. the other person's mind. Um, but that doesn't mean that's what's going on. It doesn't mean it's a false memory or anything like that. It's just I, I've been reading a bit about hypnotic regression recently, and that's some of the criticisms that I've heard of it. Did they describe what the creatures looked like? There were three different types. There's, mm. There was a small, what we would call a grey. Um, they yeah. were the kind of the workers. They were the ones that were doing the leading, doing the medical procedures. Yeah. Uh, there was also a taller being, which was more less grey, more white, and mm. they seemed to be uh, in charge of the the greys. And yeah. then there was uh, they talk of a another being which they only saw one of, which was mm. very, uh, very sort of wrinkled. It was like a very old old man yeah. so, kind of look but they seemed to be the the one that was in charge of of them yeah. all so they were they would they had three kind of it but none of them in a way said spoke with them directly they spoke with them mm-hmm. in their mind and they one of them one of them uh said said something when they on record to to one I don't know if it was uh I don't know if it was Gary or Colin but he asked one of them in mm. a because obviously they were they were they were paralyzed. They couldn't move, but they could move their yeah. eyes and heads. And and they, in his mind, he was like thinking to himself, "Why are you doing this to me? What what, what yeah. what's happening?" And in his, he recalls that in his head, he heard a voice saying, "What we're doing has to be done." And also uh, that he also had a voice in his head saying, uh, "In a way, we're just like you. We, we have lives just like you." Mm. And and to me, I'm thinking. For two guys that have no interest in UFOs, no interest mm. in the paranormal, they don't, they haven't actively gone out and watched TV shows or watched yeah, documentaries. Yeah. I mean, this is in the nineties, so let's be honest. In the nineties, the TV was full of it, full of crop circles. It was full oh, of oh, right, X Files. Uh, yeah, it was full of it. Yeah, you, you, so it was a big thing. So I'm thinking, I agree with what you're saying that that hypnotic regression, in the in the hands of some people, can be used. Um, yeah. or misinterpreted i just uh, yeah i just said that because it's it's just something to to bear in mind really um with hypnotic regression that sometimes that sort of thing can happen but um what well, I'm, I'm interested to know like how it went for them after like after they'd been regressed and they th- these memories have sort of been unlocked was it then present in their minds afterwards as a as a memory as like a conscious memory um, would they like would they were like oh yeah i can remember now and like oh yeah that did happen or was it like something that was locked away and it, it was only accessible when they were under hypnosis okay so what happened was that two the two individual men after they had this they had a number of sessions okay mm. they didn't just have one but they yeah. only had one experience but it was yeah, uh, yeah. and the experience was they both had the same experience but at in different places on the, they were on the same ship they were in they had different things done to different procedures yeah. so after they had their recall and they told their story they had the memories in their head of what had happened to them i think it was i think it was colin he had a, a bout of uh, uh, insomnia where he was waking up in in the night at you know crazy hours mm. three o'clock four o'clock in the morning and he just couldn't sleep he also had a number of after he recalled that they had a procedure on his back, a procedure on his eye. There was something that happened to his chest and also mm-hmm. at the side of his head. After he recalled that these things had happened, he started to get uh, pains in his body in those areas where his yeah. body was a kind of like a, a delayed reaction. So so possibly that whatever's happening to these individuals that, that get taken wherever they're taken and have these procedures done, there's something that's being done in the mind to disconnect yeah. any form of pain mm-hmm. or any recall of an event happening uh, until something like regression happens and it unlocks that memory and that memory mm-hmm. contains the the pain or yeah, yeah whatever with it so yeah they did have uh, and also one of them did suffer from quite bad depression afterwards he became mm. very depressed and very sort of despondent not understanding why me what why is this happening to me why yeah. why does this come into my life what what did we do to and that's kind of you think about it with anything that's kind of natural if you have an experience that mm-hmm. is that traumatic that's gonna that's gonna affect you isn't it yeah 
And did and did they report any of anything else after that? Any sort of other attempts of abducting them, or you know, a lot of times people when they've had these encounters with ships and things, they they report like waking up in the night and seeing creatures in their rooms and things like that. Yeah, they they don't report um they don't report any sort of special message. Uh, yeah. Some people have an abduction and it's you know it's it's very positive. I would say mm-hmm. that you know there is a there is a positive side to this. There is a we're talking about I would say the darker side of abductions, yeah, where people have an abduction and it and it completely messes with their life. They just wish that they mm-hmm. never walked down that road. They wish yeah. that that it was never they never you know dipped their toes to find out what happened. And then you have other people that have scenarios where they have ongoing contact mm-hmm. with whatever they might be, and it's all very positive. It's all very uplifting, and it changes their lives for the better. Um, yeah. So I, I was only I, like I've I've recently read of another case that sounded quite similar, but they were yeah. forced. Um, actually, I'll find. If you bear with me, I'm just going to look. I've got a book here that I'm reading. And yeah, yeah. I've, I've, I actually made a bookmark note because uh, yeah. I was interested in looking up this this one more. There was there was two women. This was in 1956 in California. I don't yeah. know if you've heard of this case. There was two women, Jan Whiteley and Emily Cronin. Mm-hmm. There were two women. They were driving along the mountains in California. I think it was late at night, and they pulled over to to sleep because the the traffic was like there was too many um, big rig trucks on the yeah. road, and they were yeah. worried they were going to have a crash. So they pulled over, and they decided, well, we'll just sleep through the night, and then in the morning we'll be able to see better. They woke up in the middle of the night. They, there was a big bright light in front of their car, and they were paralyzed. And one of the one of the women with really like with as much mental effort as she could moved one of her fingers Mm. and it was as if as soon as she was able to move one of her fingers this paralysis broke and the light disappeared her and her friend were suddenly able to move but her friend also reported exactly the same thing she'd woken up she was paralyzed she saw this bright light and then all of a sudden it was as if this paralysis lifted and it was because her friend had managed to move one of her fingers and it was as if it broke the this field or whatever it was and um they similarly had hypnotic regression what they weren't able to recall mentally without hypnosis was that there was figures in the light and it was like these and they were, i think they were like black hooded figures with white flat faces and since that event on regular regular occasions they'd be visited in the night like one of the women would wake up and there'd be these figures stood around her bed and she'd be paralyzed and she'd do the same thing she'd have to move one of her fingers or a leg or something and it was as if by moving, she was able to break the paralysis and these figures would disappear. But it was happening quite a lot after this first encounter. They'd be visited in their homes by these creatures. It's really interesting that you mm. bring that up. It's a case that I, I've heard of, um, yeah. but I've not read a lot into it. The connection there is that I, when I hear that, of course, one of the most famous cases of abduction and alien contact was Whitley Strieber's communion yeah mm-hmm. and obviously his cabin in the woods scenario where he had his he had his encounters there and that he also made a connection that he believed that there was some form of poltergeist activity going on in his cabin at night yeah and that he came to the conclusion that maybe it wasn't anything ghostly that they were these little beings were in his home at night and they were in some mm-hmm. way not visible to him he couldn't see them but he was aware that they were around yeah when you yeah. um when you say about these two women having on recall that they could see these hooded shadowy figures mm-hmm. one of the things that these two chaps do recall is when they had their first session and did their regression the first time they um they record that they couldn't actually see in their mind what was actually taken them but they could all they could see was these shadowy gray nondescript Mm. things entities that were around them and they couldn't it was only later on when their memories became clearer and evolved that they could then give a description as to what they look like you know the little as we get the classic little little gray men and stuff but Mm. um but also when you say about paralysis have you ever have you ever experienced sleep paralysis? Yeah, yeah, I have actually, and I, I've actually had the same thing. Yeah, where, where 
as I was described in this book I'm reading, where I I was I woke up and I I felt like there was someone like I could feel like a chest on my like covering me as if someone was trying to like smother me and I I couldn't breathe and I I couldn't move and I I actually managed to like wiggle my hand <clears throat> and that seemed to break the paralysis I had like exactly the same thing so that's what when I first heard of a lot of these um UFO abduction encounter like especially when people are waking up and they're saying they're par- par- paralyzed yeah. I thought well it just sounds like sleep paralysis to me but it's the cases where there's two witnesses and they both have the same thing happen to them like yeah at the same time like that case with the women that they, they both saw the same thing at the same time it wasn't like one of them woke up and was paralyzed you know that's I, I also wonder if maybe it's done on purpose maybe people are abducted in a way that makes it seem like sleep paralysis so when they tell anyone about it it's they can be hand waved away oh you just had sleep paralysis you know you wake up in the night and you can't move and there's things around your bed it's like your little alien creatures you know maybe they do it on purpose to seem like sleep paralysis now i've told this story i i keep telling it and mm. but i have to retell it because you know like you you m- might not have heard it and right. many years ago as a teenager i saw things in the sky yeah you know and i was with a friend he saw the same thing and my dad saw the same thing and they were very strange it was like three points of light made a triangle and they all mm. zoomed off in different directions and it had lasted for about 10 15 minutes anyway that was the sighting and I'm I'm not going to go into too much detail because you know p- people most people get sick of me recalling it all the time. But when you when you when you say about sleep paralysis, I I've had that as well. I yeah. had the sleep paralysis and and I had it as a a young boy, uh, maybe early teens, where I would mm. wake up and I would see this kind of shrouded dark figure in the corner of my room, mm-hmm. and it was it was really tall, nearly to the ceiling, and it never moved, and it was just there. Mm. And I was so scared and I was because I used to sleep with the the curtains open and the light would come in. Of course, my room would be semi illuminated and I would just stare at it and then I would try to go to sleep. But I would the more I looked at it, the more fearful and I had the more of my inability to move would overtake me. And I would I'd want to shout for my mum or my parents or make a noise and I couldn't. And the only mm-hmm. way that I could make it go away was to to, to go back to sleep. And of yeah. course, you know, but later on in my later years, like maybe 10 years ago, five, 10 years ago, I had another bout of sleep paralysis. And the most, the most disturbing one was I fell asleep. I was having a nap in the afternoon. I fell asleep on my bed and I woke up. I just woke up out of just, you know, as you do. And I could feel a pair of hands and these hands were like hulk hands they were huge and they were around my wrist and my hands were at my front and i was led on my side and i could feel a pair of knees digging into my back my upper back as if some of us like like bear hugging me Mm. and holding me in place i could feel the thing i could actually feel the the indexes of the fingers on my back of my wrist and I could feel the like what I would think was somebody's lower chest pushing into the top of my my neck. It actually felt like I was being bear hugged, and I I thought, well, I'm obviously having an episode. I'll relax. I'll concentrate on my breathing. Mm. And as I did that, this whole feeling kind of evaporated, and I could move. But I couldn't move at the time. I I could only move my eyes, and that's all I could do. And that was it was the most real feeling that I've ever had from a sleep paralysis episode normally as you Mm. say you wake up in the middle of the night and you can't move and you're looking around and you feel a bit scared and then you go back to sleep or you really struggle to move part of your body and it's a very horrible sensation where you know that you can't physically move any of your limbs it's very Mm. i think frustrating is a word that's um that is similar to what i experienced when i had it was i felt my, my first at first i felt like i was dreaming that someone was l- like a, a big person was was lying across my face like their their mm. chest and i could feel it really clearly and then when I, I woke up and i could still feel this presence over my face and i couldn't breathe at all and i felt like i was being held down it was you know i could tell it was like um like a a, a big man <laughs> sort of laying yeah. over me it was a such large a weird person, sensation yeah. 
I, I could feel it very clearly and it wasn't until I, I managed to move like I really did like m- remember trying to move like my finger on my hand and um because I, I was my girlfriend at the time was asleep next to me and I remember I, I moved my hand and like sort of nudged her and she like I don't know rolled over and grabbed my hand back or something and that sort of brought me out of it but mm. yeah I do remember very clearly it was like there was a presence there it's very odd what what were you um how was your life going at the time were you in as much stress or I was quite young at the time I was a teenager and it was pretty easy going but um I, I think that house was uh I, well I don't know I, I suppose that girlfriend at the time she was a bit sort of controlling and so you felt a bit repressed. Yeah, there was a, quite a, a lot of like strange stuff going on in that house. Like she was quite into like uh, witchcraft and paranormal stuff. And uh, I remember there was just there was other times where I woke up and there was like I saw like strange figures in the room and stuff like that. You know, it's, it's just a bit of a strange house. I'm all, I'm all ears, uh, Tom. You can you can uh, that sounds fascinating. I mean, yeah. you would wake up and see a figure in the room. Well, I remember one time I w- woke up. And the very, there was just like an old man came walking, came like walked into the room and stared at me. It was just so vivid. It wasn't like a dream, really. I'm, I'm sure it was a dream, but it was just so vivid. And I just remember waking up and just thinking, who the hell was that guy? Um, and she told me, she told me stories that she'd woken up in the night, or she thought she'd woken up, and there was like a hooded figure at the foot of the bed, and it had grabbed her by the ankles and tried to drag her out of the bed, and she'd been like holding on for dear life. Um, it was just a, a strange house. I remember sometimes she'd go out to work, and I'd be alone in the house, and every time I walked past the light switch, I'd hear the light switch flick. This particular light switch in the house, and it would it would happen so often, that, and the light switch wouldn't actually switch on or off, but I'd hear it as if like the sound of a light switch clicking. And it was just as I walked past it. And it happened so much that I got sort of scared to walk past this particular light switch in the in the house. It was just, it just it was a weird house. It had an odd feeling to it. It was just it was just strange. And yeah, this... did you ever get sort of used to it? I don't know, really. It didn't. It, this light switch thing would I, I felt like it started out where I used to think, oh, that's, that's weird. But I never used to think about it. And then after a while, it, it, it happened so often it started to freak me out. And it was it was like. The opposite of getting used to it, you know what I mean? It was like I got, I got. The house felt like a repressive. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't. It could have just been the, like I say, the fact that I, I felt a bit trapped in this relationship, and uh, you know, it could, it could have been because of that. It could have been it, that it, you were manifesting all of that. Yeah, from yeah. Your subconscious yeah, could be, yeah. and that that you were projecting that you mm. wanted to move away or get some more sort of space. Yeah, um, I didn't think of that. Yeah. I've never been in. I mean, I'm just speculating. I'm no psychologist, you know, but um, I I I do think that there is a, a connection with the UFO phenomenon, the paranormal mm-hmm. phenomenon. I spoke recently to um, another guest I had on regarding the the UFO abduction phenomenon, the paranormal phenomenon, and I think possibly some form of connection there. I don't know what it is, mm-hmm. but I think that where you see UFOs, there's usually some form of paranormal goings yeah. on as well mm-hmm. and when i say uh when i say ufos i don't mean you know i don't i don't mean it has to be spaceships in the sky i'm mm-hmm. when I, i'm just anything that is unexplained or not known what it might be mm-hmm. that that is in the in the night sky or in the area you know it, i mean because we have people that have had ufo encounters not necessarily with a a, a, a spaceship but with with beings and those beings mm-hmm. can be as you say greys uh, mm-hmm. you know la, la, taller what, what they call the whites and also mechanical beings have you ever i mean i've read a few cases where people have had uh, encounters and have been taken on craft by what we would call robots there's a case near quite close to me i don't know if you've heard of the gateshead grey case yes 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 and that was um, like a small boy who encountered some aliens down the street. It's it's just about five minutes down the road from me where it happened. But yeah. he saw a whole like menagerie of different things. Like one was like a Bigfoot type of creature. One was like a, a typical like Nordic type. It's just it seems that people just report like I think this image of the gray alien is only a recent invention before yeah. 
yeah, that yeah. sort of entered people's consciousness. People would see all oh, robots and big hairy aliens and all sorts of different things, all different sizes. So. Well, if you go back to um, the Unexplained magazine and mm. you look at the accounts in there for people that have had UFO encounters with to where they've had actually had an encounter with a occupant of a craft yeah. or they've seen the occupants of a occupants of a craft if you look at some of their you know their retellings of what they saw some people say that they saw you know beautiful beautiful long-haired people you know with mm -hmm. lovely eyes and that they were smiley and they felt sorry yeah. for, you know they give that feeling of warmth and that that sorrow mm -hmm. and and then other people would say well they i saw them and they looked like as you say they looked like bigfoots they were like yeah. hairy people and yeah. there's a case um that happened really racking my brains to think of the date but i can't go off the top of my head it happened in um i think it happened in russia in a in a public park and over mm. i think it was over a hundred people witnessed this it was it was in double at least double figure it, say, it might have been triple figures but I, it was at least double it could have been a hundred but the thing is that these people in the park they witnessed this craft land near a, a one of the the trees in the park and this machine or they only describe it as a looking like a, a machine a robot from the 90 uh, from a 1950s film something yeah. you see in flash gordon you know mm -hmm. from the early days um and it got out of the exited the craft and got into the tree and started to do something and then returned back into the craft and the craft left mm -hmm. i mean is that some sort of because there are there, you know, there are researchers out there that say a lot of the ufo or if not all of the ufo phenomenon where people see things together it's some sort of group hallucination yeah I mean, what what are your thoughts on that i don't really buy the group hallucination thing it seems to me that seems more far far fetched than them actually just seeing a you know some sort of strange creature like yeah. a, a group of people all hallucinating the same thing it just seems more far fetched than it being an alien from another world or something like that. You know what I mean? I, I just don't see how that could happen. It's, I guess it's possible. I think there's definitely something to the idea that whatever you expect to see, you'll see. So I guess mm. those people from that time might have expected to see some kind of sci-fi robot type of thing. Uh, because if you think about it, people have been abducted by strange creatures for Forever, thousand, thousand years. Yeah, yeah they, you know they they would call them fairies and goblins yeah. and things like this. It was only when the idea of space travel entered our consciousness that we started to see beings from outer space coming yeah. to take us away. You know, it's uh, and and it, the descriptions of fairies and jinn and other creatures are, are, are kind of similar to aliens in the way that everyone describes them as being different heights and different shapes and sizes. To me, there's some sort of force. You know, you can't wrap your, head, your brain around it, really. So when you see it, you kind of just think, what's that? And you, you sort of try and fit it into whatever sort of cultural idea you've got of what some people will see a demon or some people will see a ghost, some people will see a, an alien. To me, it's as if there's something, there's some kind of force that we don't understand. Many years ago, when our, our ancestors set out in the ships and travelled the globe to look for new lands, Mm -hmm. There was a story of um, an account where I'm not going to start naming names because I'll mess it up. But there's an account where one ship, they saw land, land ahoy sort of thing, new place, let's go and investigate. They they anchored their their ships. Their, you know, these, are, these are all like, like galleon ships, you know, the old, the proper old days. And they anchored their ships out in harbour and they rowed their boats into the see if there's anybody there. And there was a, a, a tribe that lived there. That was their land. And they yeah. thought, well, let's see if we can make contact and maybe trade or whatever, you know. So they met the the tribe and they offered the 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 leader to and the you know their group of people to come to the shore and have a look how they got there. And of course, they led them to the to the shore and said, "There's that's how we travelled here." And the the tribe could not see the ships anchored mm -hmm. in the harbour. They couldn't yeah. see them because they they didn't know what they were looking at. So their yeah, brains yeah. couldn't fathom. And it was only when they put them on the boats and rowed them out to the ships that they became they mm -hmm. suddenly became aware of them. Yeah. yeah. Possibly, possibly with the mm -hmm. UFO phenomenon is like you touched on just then. When we have an encounter, we are interpreting it 
in the way that our brains can understand it. So, for example, if I'm someone that's into, you know, at the time, it's maybe the 1950s, pop culture is Flash Gordon and, you know, rockets and and mechanical men. That's what I'm going to see. That's Mm -hmm. what my brain is set up to see. Uh, Or the phenomenon, the aliens or whatever they are, maybe they have the ability to project what we can understand. So that, for example, now in pop culture, we've got the little gray alien with the big eyes. Mm -hmm. It's kind of everywhere. So when someone has an encounter, I mean, kind of making sense. Mm -hmm. Is that a possibility? Yeah. I'll tell you another theory that I've recently read is that, uh, hold on. Sorry, I'm going to grab another book. No, that's fine. (laughs) I forgot the author's name. I'm reading a book. I don't know if you've read it. It's called How to Defend Yourself Against Alien Abduction. No, I haven't read that Anne, one. Anne Druffle. She's read. She's wrote a few books. This is the only one I've read, but she's got a theory. There's two types of alien encounters. One is when people see these mechanical ships in the sky. Mm-hmm. She said, she maintains that they're real because there's so many credible witnesses of people seeing these things. And she says they, they must be, you know, a physical thing that yeah. you actually see. But then when we encounter these creatures, say, it, you know, when we wake up in the night and see like an alien at the foot of the bed or something like that, that there's something else. They could be these spirits, jinn, you know, uh-huh. fairies, whatever. And they're projecting the idea into our minds that they're this technologically advanced alien race okay, so, that yeah. we'll com- so that we'll comply with them. So we get the idea that they're, there's nothing we can do to fight back against them and, you, you know, we won't see them for what they are. So... They they they're kind of making themselves out to be these aliens. So when people have seen ships and you know there's something out there, but then there's this other other phenomena, which could be some sort of mental projection. Yeah, and it's, and it's done specifically so that we'll comply with them. So we think, oh my god, the aliens are coming, but really it's some kind of spiritual force or something else that we don't quite understand. And but they they they're making themselves seem more technologically advanced than than us so 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 we'll comply with them as we're reaching the end of this episode i Mm. i wanted to ask you i wanted your thoughts on when we read about abductions we have the darker Mm. side and the positive side yeah what what's your thought on the what do they want what do the what do you think uh an alien group of aliens or if there's multiple different types and maybe mm-hmm. they maybe they come from a faraway place or maybe they maybe they've been here forever maybe we are a product of them i don't know but what do you think that their goal could possibly be i don't know it's a hard answer. it's a hard question to answer that it's uh, there seems to be so many different types of abduction stories mm. and different things that happen maybe there isn't one particular reason for them to do this maybe there's different races abducting people for different reasons like you say, some people seem to have quite a positive experience. Other people seem to really hate it and, you know, mm. fear being abducted. Mm. Maybe they're all being abducted by different different races of aliens for different purposes. Like, I, I don't think I'd really be able to... I don't know. What do you think? I do have a theory, and it's mm-hmm. one that's my own theory, my own opinion. And I don't think that... Um, I think that there's multiple races or multiple mm-hmm. types of yeah alien encounters. And I do think that they have all got their own agenda and mm-hmm. but i also think that those agendas have a there's some form of commonality with all of those agendas that they have so all the different mm-hmm. types of encounters that people have um all the different things that they experience there's a one core thing that maybe holds it all together i mm-hmm. think that there is a it, we we do know that there's medical procedures that are taking place on people some of those medical procedures are quite painful and people obviously uh, some people have had their health affected some people have died you know some people have got sick and and become very ill from it so there is something going on that is potentially very harmful to the individual that it happens to now i I very much doubt that that's a mental thing that you know oh it's the mind making the body ill i think there is an outside force that is causing it what i think their agenda might be is some form of human uh, terraforming some way for them to live on this planet in a body very much like our own but because obviously their bodies aren't really suited possibly to our atmosphere or our gravity or 
you know, mm -hmm. the way that we live. You know, it's not yeah. their bodies aren't really they want a body like what we've got. And I think that they're trying to genetically modify a, you know, a vessel that they can mm -hmm. then live in or be in or tr be transferred in. I mean, we are talking, some people think, oh, okay, he's gone mental. But we are talking, the, for us, the realms of science fiction. But when we look at these, you know, these people that have these um, experiences, and then you look at the, the, the types of uh, beings that are doing these procedures on them, they seem to live in a world of science fiction because some of the stuff they use um, is beyond our capability to understand what it is they're using but they are using tools and they're using things that we've got no understanding of what they are and what they do so mm -hmm. i think that um it is most probably a some form of medical procedure to over time to so that they can be on this planet for a longer time without any external aid for themselves um mm -hmm. I, but i do also think that there's other things on this planet that maybe they're interested in one thing I didn't uh, go to talk about earlier was when these people have these sightings, there's a lot of them, not all of them, but a lot of them always happen near water. So there's a there's a connection with with water yeah. and the UFO phenomenon. Mm -hmm. I'm not really sure yeah. what that is, but obviously people see these craft entering and leaving like large lakes, large yeah. reservoirs. So there is something there. You know, who knows? There could be a lot of our oceans of the world are not even explored. So we don't know mm -hmm. what's down there. We just have no clue what is down right down there. And if you're in a, a craft that can go that deep, who knows what's down there? Who knows? They yeah. could be massive as alien cities down there. Well, yeah, we yeah. don't know. And I mean, it's easy to scoff and laugh at someone like myself saying that. You could think, oh, you're completely bonkers. But the fact is that we don't know. I mean, mm -hmm. we're discovering new things every day. And, the scientists out there, they'll discover this or they'll discover new species that we had no idea was even still around. So, yeah, yeah, I, I think that there is some sort of a common goal with them. Mm. And I do think that there is, as we say, I do think there's multiple races of them or types of them. But I do mm -hmm. think that they're all they're all maybe they all don't get on and maybe they're all sort of going, you know, they all want their own little bit of whatever they want but i do think that um there is a there's too much going on to say it's just one thing and i do think yeah. that over time as we see the evolution of what they look like that might not even be what they look like yeah i mean it could be that i mean if you thought like i'm just thinking about on earth like if humans discovered some tribe in the jungle that we'd never contacted before yeah There'd be one group of people who want to go in and make contacts. There'll be another group who will be trying to keep those people out. There'll be another group of people who want to go in and kill everyone in the tribe and steal their stuff and take yeah. their resources. True. And, you know, there'll be all these sort of warring factions of people trying to do different things. And maybe that's a, a similar thing with the abductions. Maybe there's, you know, because if they're so techno technologically advanced, couldn't they have just come in and taken over and inserted their own hybrid species by yeah. now? But if there was sort of sort of warring factions who had different ideas of how to go about it, and some of you know some people might be getting abducted and having their hybrid alien fetuses taken out of them and destroyed, you know, by another warring faction or something like that. There could be all sorts of different um, ideas of how to ideas from different races on how to contact humans, and that could be one reason mm. of why they haven't sort of progressed as as quickly as they could have done i think there's always room for new thoughts and new ideas but i do think that there is i think that people are starting to realize that there is a darker side i mean it, it also what you're saying about them trying to create like a you know a hybrid so that they can enter our world again if we go back to old folklore that was you know that was what the uh the fairies were doing they were stealing yeah humans and replacing them with their own you know replacing human babies with their own babies so that they could live in our world because mm. they lived in like a a separate dimension to our own so they were you know or they were creating like they were impregnating humans so that we'd have their baby we'd have fairy babies and they'd be able to live in our world that's like a again it's a concept that's been around for 
a long hundreds time. Hundreds of years. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A... I mean, before we had the, you know, the 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 archetypal kind of grey, we had, as you say, mm. we had that, and we had many people that would say, well, you know, I went to a house and. I woke up in this strange cottage and there were these little fairy folk and they held me down and they wouldn't let me go. And, mm -hmm. and then they come back and they've been gone for two days or they've been gone for a whole afternoon. When yeah. They sh so, yeah, I mean, it, as I say, it's maybe, as I say, it's um, we're talking about the what you know we see what we see and mm -hmm. it, it, we're, sh we're shown an image that we that we then interpret and our minds cannot interpret any more than that. So it's mm -hmm. a massive it's a huge hole and i think that are we we're not going to get near it uh an answer anytime soon because it's always going to be it's such vast it's so massively vast that it's just you know how can you how long is a piece of string yeah and also when when we do seem to get answers you know if when there's stories of people interacting with these entities and they give them answers there's, there's quite a lot of I've seen some accounts that seem to suggest that they're giving them false information. Yeah, lying to them, yeah. You know, like um, the case, do you know, the Indrid Cold? Indrid Cold, yeah. Yeah, and there was, he, he, he like, I can't remember what the guy's name was, but he said he was he was taken off in Indrid Cold's ship and shown his world and all this, and mm. he said he was from the, the, the star system of Ganymede. And Ganymede's a moon, is it around Jupiter or somewhere? It's not even really a star system. So, in he, because he, he was sort of, getting all this information telepathically he said he got a sense that he was giving him that injured cold was giving him false information to to put him off the scent sort of thing well yeah the thing with that case is that what's scary about that is when that guy had the experience and they in this this person showed himself to him that he was this mm. basically this suited grinning man yeah and he his just mouth normal, never moved really. and yeah he it was more of a telepathic thoughts going yeah, into his mind yeah. it was like that that in itself is is kind of scary mm -hmm. just that i'm um, yeah. on a dark road meeting someone and they then then you're you're from that point on your life changes mm -hmm. and it just everything is just bizarre and i say we got there you know of course when it goes back to mothman and point pleasant yeah. and all that and and all those crazy things that went on there. We had the, 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 the lights in the sky. We had the paranormal stuff and all the poltergeist stuff and the weird stuff that went on there. So, the, yeah, I mean, the world is very strange and there is a lot of strange stuff going on. But as I say, on this episode, we've just we have literally just dipped our toes in. We've literally just dipped our toes into the massive ocean that is um, yeah. that is the UFO phenomenon. A last question on uh, in general that I wanted to ask you was, for you in the future and your channel, have you got any um, really sort of weird ideas for videos or topics coming up? Um, on the subject of aliens or just... Yeah, in general, like really... paranormal, aliens, um, something like weird like that. Well, I am researching this injured cold thing quite extensively because I'm, I'm very interested in that at the minute. So uh, I might have a video on the, the grinning man coming out soon. Um, but yeah, I just I, I, I tend to just go where the winds take me really with things like this so um yeah i've I've been researching that and i also wanted to look into this that case with the two ladies from california so yeah. i might with my channel i'm kind of interested in i guess more the folklore side of things and how these things all link together one idea i had was to try and come up with some kind of unified theory of the paranormal i could say you know when you were saying about how a lot of these cases people will see ufos and mm. then They'll, it'll be related to some sort of ghost. Yeah. And, and I've heard I've heard stories of people seeing like werewolves and things like that after encountering UFOs. It's, I wonder if there's some way to sort of unify a lot of the paranormal fields into some kind of. What I would like to do is I'd like to get you back on for an episode just on uh, the area of Canic Chase in England. Mm -hmm. It's a area of woodland that's about forty five miles in square. They have. It's got like mountain bike trekking. People can go camping there. They can. There's music concerts that go on there. Yeah. But um, some of the weird stuff that's gone on there is totally mind blowing. And when you say werewolves, wild men, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, men with pig faces, um, poltergeist activity, uh, mm -hmm. lights in the trees and lights in the sky, yeah, it's it, it's a whole episode there on Canic Chase. It is completely bizarre. I'll send you some links that will make you scratch your head. 
Um, it's it is it is a a completely wacky place, and I think that um, if somebody said, "Do you want to go camping in Canic Chase?" I would like, yeah, as long as there's a massive group of people. I don't know if I'd have the the guts to do it on my own because I've got so much in my head of that I've read of things mm-hmm. that have happened there. I would, you know, any little noise yeah. would set me off. That sounds cool. But it, yeah. but it definitely uh, there's definitely an episode there for something. You know, it's it's up the it's kind of in the uh, the, the the shrouded hand kind of area because there's some really weird stuff. Yeah, I mean, I like I like the stories that don't have a very clear cut answer. You know, as uh, you kind of think, well, like um, you know, I really like a lot of poltergeist cases are like that. You, mm. you, sometimes it seems like people are faking it, and then there's sort of weird things happen where you know, well, they couldn't have faked that. And it, it, I, I like a real mystery of a story, and that's kind of the cases that I gravitate towards really you know awesome all right tom well it's been great having you on yeah cool i really enjoyed our conversation uh we talked about lots of interesting things and I, and I do always like to speculate and talk about topics that interest us both on, on a final note what are your plans for the future any any anything coming up for you anything uh that uh you need to let anyone know about I don't know if people have seen my video on the Sandown Clown, which is another possible alien encounter. They don't really know what it what it was. I've got a possible follow up for that. I've I've received some more interesting information on it, and there's there's more. Basically, there was a story that appeared in um, the Bufora magazine. Yeah, and there was only a little bit of information about it, which I covered. But I've I've received some more information, so there might be a follow up to this. I don't know if people have watched that video, but if they like that, there should be a follow up coming up with, with some interesting information. So that's the only that's the only plan. I don't really plan things out, to be honest. I just yeah, things just happen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Tom. Thanks very much for yeah, coming on. Thanks for inviting uh, and me. That's that's quite all right. It's it, I've been it's been a blast. Um, so thanks everyone for listening. Uh, remember paratalkpodcast dot com for other episodes uh, and where you can find this episode. And if you do get a moment, I'd really appreciate some uh, a feedback on one of your podcast hosts of whichever one you might use. And until next time, I'll see you soon. Mm-hmm.